and welcome to another Weekly 3 with Tony T. I'm Tony Trongone, Superintendent of Biblical Public Schools. In this video, we will cover three topics. The first being an explanation of a shelter in place versus a lockdown. So we're revisiting that topic. The second will be student handbooks. And the third will be a visit from our county superintendent. My first topic is a quick review of two security events, a shelter in place and a lockdown. I covered the different types of security events that may potentially occur in our buildings, but I feel as if I need to revisit these two types of events, and I want to make sure it's clear how they differ. As I explained in last week's video, a shelter in place is best represented with a yellow light, meaning caution. When we call a shelter in place, we are responding to an internal or external disturbance that requires us to clear the hallways and retain students in their classrooms. Teaching and learning proceeds as normal during this time. There is no direct threat to our students or staff. Once the shelter in place is lifted, non-emergency movement in the hallways may resume. Events that may result in the need for a shelter in place include police activity in and around the area of the school, an unruly visitor, a medical emergency or a student in crisis. We have had situations so far this year that required us to call a shelter in place for a student in crisis for two reasons. One, the situation required us to call in first responders to assist, and the second being the situations occurred just prior to a scheduled class change and also occurred in the hallway. So there was a need to hold students until the crisis could be resolved. The second event is a lockdown, best represented with a red light. When we call a lockdown, we're responding to an internal or external threat that poses an immediate or imminent possibility of danger to students and staff. All students and staff will move to a pre-designated safe area and follow prescribed protocols until they are given the correct signal to exit the lockdown. In this situation, there is a danger, such as an active shooter, and we have our students and staff respond accordingly to the lockdown protocols. I hope this further clarifies our families what the difference is between these two events, a shelter in place and a lockdown. As an added request, I would like for our families to remember that rumors often spread during these situations. Unfortunately, the facts fall behind in the timeline of these rumors due to how quickly they can spread over text messages and screenshots. It helps no one when we perpetuate rumors and cause public alarm when the situation is being addressed and resolved. It may not be possible for us to share all the details of a crisis situation with families while the event is occurring, but we will never share more than what we can confirm to be fact. My second topic is our student handbooks. In previous videos, I shared that we will be moving to a common student handbooks at the three different school levels, grades K to five, grades six to eight, and grades nine to 12. Work on these handbooks began this summer, and they recently were reviewed by the Board of Education Policy Committee to ensure that they were aligned with our district policies. There will be an ongoing evaluation of the handbooks by administration. The student handbooks are now available online for our families to view. Simply look for the students menu on any school website and click the link for student handbooks. Within each handbook is information that is specific to your child's school and including a staff directory, a school schedule, school procedures, student code of conduct, and extracurriculars, health information, and student support programs. There are important policies also included for your reference. Please review these handbooks for yourselves and your children. The answers to many questions you may have are likely to be found in them. If you have any questions that are not addressed in the student handbook, please reach out to your child's school. My third topic is our recent visit by the Executive County Superintendent of Schools in Cumberland County, Dr. Robert Bumpus. For those of you who may be unfamiliar, every school district in our county is overseen by an executive county superintendent's office. And Dr. Bumpus is responsible for ensuring that our districts are functioning at the highest level possible, including our instructional programs. 
On Tuesday, I accompanied the county superintendent on a visit to Holly Heights Elementary School, and Dr. Bumpus visited Mrs. Owen's class, where they were working on their vocabulary and foundations, and we also spoke with fifth grade teaching staff members that were engaged in virtual coaching for the new American Reading Company program. The teachers were learning how to build on EARLA baseline leveling of students to guide each student's individual reading program. And EARLA stands for the Student's Independent Reading Level Assessment. Dr. Bumpus told me that he was impressed with the Holly Heights principal, Steve Saul, and the ongoing job embedded professional development for the ARC reading program and the activities and student engagement we all witnessed in Ms. Owen's class. Great job by our Holly Heights Hawk staff and students. And now for some upcoming events. On Tuesday, October 4th, we'll have a FASFA workshop at the high school at 6 p.m. On Friday, October 7th, all schools will be closed for a staff development day. On Monday, October 10th, all schools and offices will be closed in observance of the holiday. On Thursday, October 13th, we will have our Millville High School Miss Holly City competition at Lakeside Middle School at 6 p.m. On Monday, October 17th, we'll have our Board of Education meeting at 7 p.m. at the Culver Center. And now for some shout outs. For my first shout out, I would like to do a joint recognition of two district staff members, principal of Lakeside Middle School, Amanda Gaunt, and the principal of Millville High School, Jamie Sutton. For their first two weeks of school, they have been met with uh, more than a few interesting situations, and they've met those challenges, uh, obviously displaying great leadership skills, but also in their problem solving, they put our students first and making sure that our students are not only safe and secure, but also feel comfortable in their learning environment, and they should be commended for how they've handled these situations and continue to handle them uh, as we move forward in the school year. So thank you. And for my second shout out, I would like to recognize our security staff who have done an outstanding job to date and should be commended for their handling of events in the past two weeks. Keep up the good work. Thank you and go Bolts.